Hey, everybody, welcome to a uh, rare lunchtime stream that I'm doing here because we've got a new thing to check out. We have the official online tools for the new Dagger Heart series that is produced by Darrington Press, which is the uh, publishing arm of Critical Role. So for all you critters out there, I'm sure you've heard of this. So what I'm doing today, this is a total blind run through because I, I wanted to see a couple things. I wanted to see a how user friendly this was going to be uh, for someone that just came into this and, and is brand new to the thing. And also just to get a feel for it without having any kind of preconceived notion. So a little bit of background. This is supposed to be their kind of fantasy setting. Um, so, you know, they're... Uh, a lot of people call it their answer to D and don't, don't I don't know, you know, and the rumors floating around with whether or not they're going to be leaving D and whatever. That's not what we're here to talk about today. What we're here to talk about today is uh, what this character builder is and how it looks. So, uh, the first thing to note is that this is a through demiplane. So, just a little background on that demiplane. Uh, a lot of the people that worked on the initial startup of D and D Beyond ended up moving over to demiplane when uh, some of the shakeup and the wizards was buying them and that acquisition and things. Uh, but now they've they've come over here to demiplane and they're doing a lot of the same stuff they did with D and D Beyond, but with a bunch of varying systems. So, for instance, I think they just did Pathfinder. I, now, of course, they've got Daggerheart going. Uh, I think you can do the Marvel Multiverse over there as well. And uh, let's see, what else do they have? Uh, Alien, I think. Still waiting on them to get a Walking Dead one. I mean, they have some other free league, but... Anyway, so this is the character sheet. So all I've done, uh, I've just loaded into the character sheet. And you can get that, you know, you can get that to here uh, up on the library. But we'll, we'll go through that. I just want to run through the actual character sheet and see what we've got going here. Okay. Let's just get started. Welcome to Daggerheart. Okay, some important information. The game is still in active development. That is good to know. This game doesn't officially come out until next year, I don't think. So everything we're doing today is just beta. So this is going to be all very early kind of uh, in development stuff. Things probably won't be as polished as they are. Although I will say, just looking at it so far, I'm, I'm still impressed. With, with what I'm seeing already for this to be early alpha anyway, so. All right. Rulebook has not gone through an editor. Okay, don't, whatever. Balancing of adversaries is still in an exploratory phase. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So I think this is just all warnings. There are many inspirations for this game. I would encourage you to also check out other things you like. Okay. What? Ever. Getting started. Have a session zero. Think about character concepts. Record your level. All levels start at uh, level one. Awesome. Uh, hey, uh, Nafel, how, how you doing? Let's see. Make sure to change every time you level up. Blah, 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 blah. Choose your heritage. Okay. So it looks like this is kind of nice, though. It looks like it's got everything steps one, two, three, four. Just kind of running down through there. Choose your class. Okay. That makes sense. Assign character traits. I might have to pop back up to this. I'm not going to just read through everything through here, but let's let's just go get started. Character name. I'm going to make this easy. I'm going to do Wolfkins. I can spell my own name. Uh, pronouns. This character is going to be a he, him. I'll start at level one. Okay, let's see what kind of character portraits they have here that are... <laughs> is there a wolf? Was there never a wolf? What is that? Kind of looks like a dragon, maybe? It's kind of small. Let's see if I can... Oh, yeah. I think that's like a dragonborn or something. All right. Let's go with that one. If it locks us into a race, we can always come back and, and change it later. <laughs> All right. Let's begin. All right. Heritage. So we need to choose an ancestry... We need to choose a community. All right, so what's the difference here? A character's ancestry reflects their lineage and impacts the way they physically look, as well as granting them a unique ability from their ancestry. So this is, okay, this is what was the old race from D&D, okay? Choose your community. You'll choose a community from the available community cards. Your character's community informs the culture they grew up in and might also play a part in how they look. 
Okay. Communities can be influenced by details such as their physical location, values, and goals. So that's pretty interesting. So not only do you choose a ancestry, for lack of a better word, race, uh, you also choose a community which helps diversify and explain your background. I, I, I like that, actually. All right, so let's see what kind of ancestors we've got. Clank. Sentient mechanical beings. Okay. Demon. Okay. Uh, humanoid descendants of the fallen gods. Dracona. Okay, they resemble wingless dragons. Uh, hey, Pie Overlord, <laughs> thanks for checking us out. Uh, dwarf, elf, fairy, fawn. Interesting. Resemble goats in humanoid form. Okay. Furbog. Oh, <laughs> I thought that said fun girl. <laughs> I was like, a oh, fun girl? We're definitely going to be that. Fun girl. Resemble a mushroom in humanoid form. Okay. I, so far, I'm liking these. I'm liking these ancestries they're a little bit different uh anthropomorphic turtles cool giant goblin half human katari feline humanoids okay oh my god <laughs> the frogs are just named ribbit <laughs> all right so again i have to voice my displeasure that there's no wolf race what what's up with these people uh so let's see. I I made my picture a, I guess a Dracona, but I don't know if I want to stick with that, because there are a, mo a lot more interesting races than I than I realized. Mushroom humanoid. <laughs> just in my head, I'm just making toad. <laughs> let's see. Do they have a picture for a mushroom? Uh. You know what? Actually, I'm going to go with the frog. Let's go with the frog. This is really nice, too, just being able to jump back and forth. I, I like how this is laid out. I mean, as far as... I know it's in early access, but uh, this layout of this character builder is really nice. Uh, so what were these called? The ribbits? Let's see what they give us. Okay. I can breathe and move underwater just as easily on land. And I have a long tongue. And grab onto things. You may also mark stress to unleash it as a finesse close weapon that deals D12. Yeah, we're doing that. We're totally going to be a frog. All right. A frog named Wolfkins. So let's see. Choose a community. Now, here's a question I have. Are the communities at all tied to the ancestry? I'm assuming no. Uh, but let's take a look. Highborn, Loreborn, Orderborn. Let's change our ancestry and see if that changes our selections. Okay, easy enough to do. No, okay. A and I didn't expect that it would. I know a lot of, you know, the conversation around the traditional aspect of race in D&D is, uh, you know, you can't really put everybody in the same bucket based on just their race which i kind of like how this is broken out so you choose your ancestry and your community community's not tied to your ancestry i like this it gives you a lot more diversity in how you can build your characters how you can actually uh be whatever ancestry you want and from whatever kind of community you want it's, it's kind of nice uh now the question do communities have or so a parallel, I guess, would be backstory for communities, because it seems like these kind of give you one additional little bonus bonus here. So once per session, when you take a short rest, you may take one additional downtime action. Okay, okay. So in my head, just kind of coming from a five E background, this would be this would be your your background for that. So what kind of frog do we want to make? Highborn, loreborn. I'm guessing they. Uh, academic political prowess. Okay. I've given no thought to what class or whatever I would actually want to do. So, again, <laughs> this is totally, totally blind. Uh, underbelly of society. Seaborn. Near large bodies of water. Uh, let's do loreborn. Why not? So, let's see what we get here. You have an advantage on any roles you make that deal with history, culture, or politics. Sure. I'm going to be a well-read ribbit. Or ribbe, if it's French, I guess. <laughs> Legasp, indeed. Uh, so let's see. Oh, I've been navigating over here, but you can also navigate back and forth here. That's that's pretty handy. 
Um, all right, let's go to class. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I just saw something here about languages. Uh, you're not asked to pick specific languages. The game assumes that everyone speaks a common language. Okay. Uh, and that sign language is widely understood across cultures and communities. Okay. Okay, so they kind of get away from having... You know, and I really don't I really don't mind that, because to be honest, I, I can count on my hand a number of times language has actually come up in my D&D game, and nine times out of ten, it's uh, written on a dungeon wall somewhere, and it's just something we can't read without a spell that the wizard has. So it really just... It's nice flavor, I guess, but it, it does kind of just end up being kind of hand waved away anyway so all right let's see bard of course there's always a bard druid guardian ranger rogue seraph okay sorcerer warrior wizard so not a lot of big changes here i'm assuming the seraph is something like a paladin let's see a bundle of offerings or sigil from your god Beginning of a session, roll d4. Yeah, so really, really nothing nothing too innovative here with the classes. I mean, not that that's a bad thing. It's your pretty standard traditional... Uh, your pretty standard traditional fantasy tropes. Uh, bard, druid, guardian. So I guess the one thing that's kind of missing would be a warlock. So let's see what the difference is between a sorcerer and a wizard here. Uh, since the presence of magical people and object when you're close to them. What I, I want just like a, a detailed about what exactly... I want like an overview. I don't see that anywhere. <clears throat> Codex and Splinter. And see, here's the thing with this being, this being kind of a blind run-through. I also don't really know... Uh, what some of these mean, like the domains, Codex and Splendor. I don't really know what that means yet. Arcana and Midnight. Well, you know what? We're we're well read. I think that we could lean into one of the one of the spell casting classes. I you know what? I'm a diehard sorcerer in in five E, so I'm gonna go with that. Let's see. Channel raw power. Once per long rest, you can place a domain card from your loadout into your vault and choose either. That entire sentence made no sense to me. <laughs> so I have no idea what that means. Uh, gain hope equal to the level of the card. Uh, I will say I'm I'm intrigued about the system, for sure. But I'm, I'm confused on what this means. So we can have a primal origin. Want to, find, want to modify spells in powerful ways or an elemental origin. Uh, I'm going to go Elemental. Do I pick that here now? Uh, primal. So this just kind of gives me a rundown. I, you can definitely see the... Uh, oh yeah, Sorcerer represent for sure. That is my favorite class in 5e. I play Sorcerers constantly. That's just... The, I can't get away from meta magic because it's... Uh, other magic is just mundane and boring without it. So I'm kind of hoping this has a similar flair. And you can really see the influence of D and D Beyond because the the character builder here and kind of the mindset and it's got a lot of the same people behind it. But you can definitely tell, and I think that's a good thing though because I really like this layout. This this is a to be honest, this is a fantastic character builder. I think uh, I really like how it looks. I like just it seems simple and intuitive, yeah. and this is just beta, so it's just going to get better from here. <clears throat> Hey, Fishy, thanks for uh, thanks for checking me out over lunch here. All right, let's see. So, Elemental Origin, I think that's the one I would go with. Uh, Spellcasting Trait Instinct. Again, no idea what that means. Choose uh, one. Water, Fire, Air, Lightning. Always Lightning for me. So, you can channel this element into unique harmless effects. You may also spend a hope to describe how you control over this element helps you in your current action you're taking. I guess that should... I guess I should point out hope. I don't really know what that is. Because if you look up here at our stats, we've got agility, strength, finesse, instinct, presence, and knowledge. So I don't I don't really know what that means. Man, we're going to have to play test this. <laughs> you can call forth your chosen element to protect you from harm. Okay. 
It's been a stress to describe how your element is channeled to defend you from 188. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, level up options. I'm I'm not there yet. <laughs> we'll come back to you, level up options. Multiclassing. You get these when available when you multiclass. Okay. So now the question is, I've selected it. How do I then, because it looks like experience is, is still grayed out. What's next? Okay, so fishy. You say there's dyes called hope die and fear die. So have you read this? We might need to have a separate conversation if you've read through this. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Um, let's see. What do you say? I hope the hope dies. And <laughs> I read the hope dies. Uh, yeah, we might have to. And fishy, if you're up for it, I, I'll. I, I wouldn't mind running this on the channel and just doing a little bit of uh, play testing with it because I've been pretty excited about it, for sure. Oh, I forgot. So yeah, fishy says I don't have the chat up on the screen for for this stream, but uh, Critical Role did have their live stream. Uh, yesterday because i think that's when this came out so i didn't have a chance to check that out because i was streaming our walking dead game then but um i'm gonna have to go back and watch that because i think that might help clear up some of the some of the confusion right now however the confusion i'm having is how do i actually select this to go for oh right here select class this could be a little bit i don't know uh, this was hidden to me a little bit because it's in the banner I think this could be moved to be a little bit more obvious, especially since I don't I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like that was hidden. Maybe I'm just being too picky. But there we go. Select class. Okay. Oh, wow. So now it opens us up to all of the other choices. So let's choose a subclass. This is where we get to choose it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go with the elemental origin. Elemental origin type. Oh, I just it's a free field. That's kind of surprising. Okay. <laughs> you got five choices. That should just be a drop down. Whatever. <laughs> uh, whatever. Not a big deal. All right. Set your traits. Okay. These values reflect your natural or trained ability in each of your six stats. Okay. Agility, strength. We already read those. So agility. High agility means you're faster on your feet. Nimbler on difficult terrain and quicker to react to danger you roll with agility to scurry up a rope quickly sprint a cover okay so agility that one that one's pretty pretty standard high strength that one's pretty standard as well now finesse this one's a little new let's see high finesse score means you're dexterous and accurate you roll with finesse for tasks that require fine modal so that's more like your dexter it's interesting it's interesting how they've kind of broken some of these out okay a high instinct score means you have a keen sense of your surroundings, so that would be like your perception and, and things like that. Presence. So presence would be essentially charisma, it seems like. You, you can definitely see the 5E roots in this system, for sure. Have a strong force of personality. Okay, and knowledge, recall, analyze, comprehend. Trait modifiers are the values associated with each trait. When you make an action roll using one of these traits, that traits modifier adjust the role's final result by that number distribute the following starting modifiers i kind of like this too uh, just it's telling you to distribute plus two two plus ones two zeros and a minus one which essentially ends up being kind of like the standard array from 5e but it cuts out a lot of the i mean we'll see how it goes but it looks like it cuts out a lot of the okay you've got a 14 that translates to this and you know, I'm so used to it now. You know, every two you go up, you get another plus one. But it, especially starting, it was kind of hard to wrap my mind around that. I think this might be a better way to do that. Since this is our first character, I'm going to just use the suggested traits. So let's see what that is. So for a sorcerer, they give us plus two instinct. Our plus ones go to finesse and presence. Knowledge and agility, plus zero. And strength is minus one. Let's see, instinct was perceive, sense, and navigate. I'm assuming that's our spell casting modifier too. If that's even how this works. That's a good uh, that's a good question. I'm not really sure. So 
Anyway, I think we got it. Alright, starting weapons. You can use armor. Okay. Choose other starting items. Suggested dual staff. Well, I, I do like this. I do like that it's suggesting things. Like, you know, hey, if you're new, th this is this is very user-friendly here. Um, and this one in the same spot as where you actually hit select class, but it just jumps out more. So yeah, can you... And what would be great is I could just click that. Oh, well, look here, look here. It does flag it, just suggest it down here. So that's nice. So that's one. Okay, so it doesn't give me another suggestion. <laughs> and this is just starting weapons, so I don't need... I don't need to do armor just yet. Uh, a wand, why not? Okay. Starting armor. Breastplate. How does it determine what you can carry, or like what kind of armor you can wear. Base score five. Oops, sorry. Okay. Well, again, it's rest, it's it's suggesting breastplate, so let's just go with the suggested. Take your starting inventory. You can take a torch, 50 foot of rope, basic supplies, and a handful of gold. Uh, then choose between. Let's do a minor health potion. And it grazed that one out. Perfect. And either a whispering orb or a family heirloom. A whispering orb? I hope it's sentient. That would be great. All right. Man, I'm I'm impressed with this, this, this uh, character builder so far. Okay. Take domain deck cards. Let's actually read a little bit of this. Domains are the core building blocks of a class in Daggerheart. In the core rulebook, they consist of Arcana, Blade, Bone, Codex, Grace, Midnight Sage, Splendor, and Valor. Okay. A deck of cards that contains a set of abilities and spells with a central theme or focus. For details on what each domain represents and how to use your domain cards, we'll read that section. Yeah, I, I mean, Fishy just said in the chat, this, seems, this character builder seems relatively simple, which is nice. Uh, for sure, and I just like the layout, too. I mean, it... The one thing, and again, I, I, I am a D&D Beyond liker. I like it. Uh, but there's a lot of tabs, and you kind of go through things. This is just laid out really nice and clean. I mean, we're still clicking through a lot of tabs, but I feel like it's organized a little bit better, and it's, it's more streamlined, and I really, really like what I'm seeing here. Okay, each class in Daggerheart is formed by combining two of these domains. For example, the warrior is Blade and Bone, the Druid is Sage and Arcana, the rogue is midnight and grace. Okay. So does that mean that I? Oh, so if we are a sorcerer for Arcana and Midnight, so that means all of these should just be listed li limited to Arcana and Midnight. Oh, okay. Interesting. There we go. So that so I'm not I don't have to actually pick the domain. I'm just picking a card in that domain. Okay. So this is this is kind of like feats, I guess. You have advantage on any attempt to pick a non-magical lock. Okay. This is pretty cool. You have a deeply personal token or trinket that can be infused with protective magic. Have a few minutes to prepare. No. You spend tokens from this card to unleash energy against a target. Sure. I like blowing stuff up. Climb on walls and ceilings as you walk around. How terrifying is it for there to be a... Just this big humanoid frog on the ceiling and then just like stick its tongue down at you and like wrap you and pull you up. So I'm going to do wall walk. <laughs> I'm imagining like a, like a weird venom type sorcerer that I just somehow made. All right, so that's that's the basis of our class then. Let's go on to experiences. Okay. In Daggerheart, your experience is one of the core ways you'll express your character's backstory and expertise through mechanics. It's a word or phrase used to encapsulate a specific set of skills your character might have because of the exciting life they've lived. So this is this is actually getting into your backstory, I guess. You'll start with two experiences at character creation. One with a plus two modifier, the other with a plus one, and you'll earn more throughout your adventure. Okay. 
So is this essentially close the door? Eyes like so. Choose your description. This is just so. This is just free field forms. So this would be, I guess, is what we look like. Clothes that are. Let's just say he's ornate. Uh, and I would put a lot more effort into a character I was actually playing. I'm. Uh, I'm just seeing how this works for now. Uh, yes, yeah, sea foam. Let's do sea foam. Body that's. Let's say curvy. I like me a good curvy frog. <laughs> The color of, like, just mud. An attitude. I think he's probably... I think he's probably snobby. Why not? Answer background questions. I like this, too. I like these prompts. Um, so, th these are great just to help the DM, I think. What did you do that make the people in your community wary of you? Who finally taught you how to control the magic bursting forth from you, and why are they no longer able to guide you? You have a true fear you hide from everyone. What is it, and why does it scare you? I'm assuming that all of these questions would be different for the class that you picked. They would, they would have to be. Uh, I'm guessing it's tied to your class. Uh, this is cool. I mean, anybody who's played a game with me, whenever we do a long-form campaign, I always send the players about 15 questions and just say, hey, fill these out. A lot of them are along these lines, like, What's your greatest fear? You know, is it a rational fear? Is it an irrational fear? Uh, is there anybody in your life that's close to you and, and things like that? And it just really helps as a DM to take some of that stuff and help incorporate their backstory into the game. This is built into the character creator. I mean, so these are targeted specific questions based on what I'm assuming is your class that just just helps kind of focus your character. I like this. This is not what I was expecting when we got to experiences, but uh, let's see. Let's just make up some stuff. What did you do that make the people in your community wary of you? Uh, let's say that I spread warts because I'm a frog. Who finally taught you to control your magic bursting forth from you? And why are they no longer able to guide you? Uh, ooh. Let's say it was my grandfather who passed away. You have a true fear you hide from everyone. What is it, and why does it scare you? I'm actually afraid of flies. How's that? Let's see. Fishy, would you say true? Can confirm. Makes the character feel like they're part of the world instead of just interacting with it. I, I, I agree. I like that. That's why I do it as a DM and why I kind of like it's built into the character here. Like, I think that's one thing other systems could do. These questions, just part as part of your backstory that you would provide and it's available on your character sheet, I think that's a very good idea. Okay. Backgrounds like bodyguard, con artist, merchant, noble, pirate, scholar, thief. Okay, blah, blah, blah. In Daggerheart, your experience is one of your core ways you'll express your character's backstory and expertise through mechanics. And experience is a word or phrase. We already read that. So what do we do here? Okay, enter experience. All right. There's no set list of experiences to choose from, though some examples are offered below. Instead, choose a word or phrase that embodies something distinctive about your character. Each experience should be specific. For example, talented or focused are too broad, as they can be applied to almost any situation. Okay. You might use swashbuckler or magic studies. Additionally, your experience can't give you spells or specific game abilities. Okay. You're encouraged to add flavor to your experience to give it more varied use in play. Instead of just saying assassin, say something assassin of the Sapphire Syndicate. Okay. So what? This is, okay, this is confusing me for just a, just a second. So how do you use them? Anytime you make an action roll, if you feel like an experience could help you succeed, you can spend a hope to add its modifier to your roll. Sometimes you might feel like you're more one of your experiences is a good fit for the situation. If it fits the story, you can apply. Okay, so this, trying to draw some parallels, this seems like your drive from the Walking Dead the system that I've been playing. So it gives you a bonus as long as that is applicable to the role you're making. Okay, so let's see. What would some experiences be for this guy? Um, I will say, let's see, let's just look at the, since, since this is our first time, let's look at the experience examples. 
Chef of the Royal Family, I won't let you down. Street Doctor. Okay. Ah, record them in the experience section. This one's a little bit harder. Oh, man. That's a little bit harder to do without actually having a character in my head. Um, let's see. I don't even know. Because <laughs> they, they specifically say... Especially in my... Let's, let's do... Okay, magical historian. I'll take that one. I know I'm I'm being I'm being not very creative right now. Um, skills like tracking cookies. Uh, oh man, this is hard. Hard, but I I like it. So magical historian. I guess I could use this in order to remember things i could get a plus two on any role like uh, if i'm trying to remember the magical history of something if we're in a library okay um i'm gonna say flycatcher <laughs> uh i feel like i should give myself a, a minus on this one though because i'm afraid of flies <laughs> so uh maybe maybe fly yeah, flycatcher, but in the terms of uh, killing the flies instead of eating them. <laughs> so why this would ever come up? I don't know. Probably wouldn't use this as a real character uh, experience, but what the hell? Let's see. Okay, so let's create connections. Oh, I went, I went one too far. Create connections. Who do you trust? Oh, why do you trust me so deeply? What did I do that makes you wary of me? These represent the relations and personal history between you and the rest of your party members. Once all players feel comfortable with their finished characters, summarize your characters for each other. At a minimum, share your name, pronouns, character descriptions, experiences. Once everyone has shared who they're playing, work together to decide how your characters are connected and how you feel about each other. So this is one of those things that's maybe a little controversial. I, I don't mind systems that are built like this with, you know, you start with everyone knowing each other. I kind of like doing the, you know, you're meeting for the first time thing. But I mean, you could still do this and that at the same time. Just, you know, just, you'd have to work around with it a little bit. Um, in this case, though, uh, you, you kind of need input from other people which is interesting. It's interesting. It's interesting this is part of the character creator. I guess you could always save your changes and come back later, but it seems weird to, to need input from other people before you could really finish the creator. But uh, it's recommended you pick at least one question to ask another NPC, but you're welcome to create new questions. All right, just let's make stuff up. Why you trust me so deeply? I have one of those faces. Uh, what did I do that makes you wary of me? I have one of those faces. <laughs> Why do you keep our shared past a secret? Uh, I'm embarrassed of you. <laughs> wow. My guy kind of turned into a jerk right here at the end. All right. The next thing would be to level up. All right. I am not ready to do this at all uh, because we're, we're not getting into that. I wanted to make a level one character. So now that we're done, I think we're done. We should just be able to hit character sheet here at the bottom because we're level one. We don't need to level up any further. Character sheet. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so what do we got here? Uh, I, I, and again, I can see the I can see the D and D Beyond influence in this, which again, I think is a totally good thing. I don't think that's bad at all. Uh, it's got evasion. All of this is kind of already calculated out for us. Armor is zero. I know I took some equipment. Let's see if we can equip it easily. Uh, active. Let's see if I find breastplate. I click that. Armor went up to five. Okay, very, very simple. Uh, let's see. Do I have an attack list anywhere? Effects and features. 
equipment. Let's go ahead and make my dual staff a tier zero magical weapon active. Oh, right here, primary. Okay. Uh, I've got it cut off a little bit. Can I move this? No, I can't. Uh, you can't really see, but the uh, the rolls do work pretty well. They don't have. I do like. I do like the the 3D die from D and D Beyond. I wish that was. I wish that was here. Um, damage roll. Okay. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to see. I didn't. I kind of clipped it off. I didn't expect it to be over there. But uh, yeah, the rolling just kind of just kind of rolls a die. Just kind of gives you a thing down here in the bottom. When you click something, it brings up uh, on the right hand side. Again, very similar to D and D Beyond. Although I do think D and D Beyond is kind of the you know the benchmark for online uh, character sheets. I just think it's a very good character sheet. Although seeing this, I've I've noted some improvements. I think they can make on that. So let's see. Um, it's got a little bit of back and forth in the chat. Let's see what we're talking about. Kind of, Fishy says he kind of likes to RP out and show people while playing, while they trust and don't trust the characters. Yeah. Let's see. The Philly says, usually situational when it comes to past campaigns. Some you start as strangers, others you know them from neighbors. Yeah, I, I think it depends. I, I really, I think it depends too. That's why I kind of don't, that's why I kind of don't like it built into the character creation. Like, okay, this, you have to pick another person and do that. It makes sense in some games. I feel like it kind of makes sense in the Walking Dead game we're playing. But even then, we didn't even do it in the, in the campaign we're running. So, I, I, yeah, I agree that it's situational. But because of that, I think it probably shouldn't be part of standard character creation. Although it did look like it's something you could just skip and come back to later. So it's it's not that big of a deal me but just struck me as a little odd uh, let's see i don't know what i'm looking at but it's intuitive to figure out how to roll things uh whenever you mouse over something that can be rolled it's kind of hard to see but you can let's see if i can zoom in if it works wow when i zoom in it, it doesn't work oh there it is you can kind of see the little dice symbol that was kind of dumb. I zoomed in, but it didn't make my mouse any better. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so the roll here brings up... It, it's hard to see, I know, but it doesn't roll immediately when you bring it up. It brings up another button that lets you then click advantage or disadvantage, and then you can roll it. Um, it rolls a hope and a fear, so that's the thing that I don't really understand. That'll be something that I'll need to look a little bit into. Um... Allows for a reroll. Select dice to reroll. All right. So this this is stuff with the rules that I've got to I've just got to learn. Uh, so right now we're just looking at the basics of the character sheet. I think that honestly the navigation is pretty pretty straightforward. I really like it. Um, I don't know if there's a reason. Domain effects features. Okay. Let's say they could rearrange this, but if these are all features, that makes sense. I like that there's a feedback right here. I mean, this is easy to get to uh, for something that's in beta that they want that they want input on. I love that. The journal this is just for making notes. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Details are just the things that you entered with your backstory. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, conditions, downtime. I thought that was going to, like, take a long rest or something. Again, don't don't know how that works in this game, but... Uh, so I do like this. I do like they give you some descriptions under agility, sprint, dodge, leap, lift, smash, grapple. I like that they give you some examples of what that might be. Because especially if you're coming from 5e, if that's the system you're used to, these are a little bit different. So like finesse, control, hide, or tinker. Okay. I probably wouldn't have thought of finesse for hiding right away, you know? So it's it's nice that they've got that. I really like the little heads up there. Uh, the hope, I'm sure this is important. I'm sure that it's there's a reason it's so front and center. Evasion, I'm guessing. 
goes hand in hand with your armor class. But yeah, that'll have to be a, another stream or video where we kind of go over and actually look at the rules. I, I specifically wanted to do this as, as blank on the rules as possible. <laughs> so. Cool. Well, I mean, for those in the chat, what are you what are you thinking so far? I mean, what do you think of the, the layout, how, how it looked? I thought it was pretty straightforward, and honestly, I really like the... I really like how it looks, to be honest. I do, and I know it's early. I do wish I could change my background. That's one of my favorite things to do on D&D Beyond is be able to change my, uh, like, the actual backdrop, not just lock it to the, the character or the class. God, that was pretty easy to jump back into the character creator, too. Back and forth. Yeah. They, they knew what they were doing when they built this. This is really nice. This is really nice. Really, really nice. All right. Well, uh, I am very curious about this system. Uh, the, the character creator, I thought, was very user-friendly, very intuitive. I didn't have any problem going through it, even not knowing anything about the rules, not really understanding exactly what I was getting into. I was able to make a character. I mean, it took us, what, maybe 40 minutes, but that was kind of going through, reading everything. I think this will go super, super quick, if especially if you know what you're doing. So yeah, the character creator was, was super intuitive. I liked it. I liked the layout better, even than the way that the character creator works on D&D Beyond. I think they could take some pointers on UI design from the people that are over here now. <laughs> uh, kind of a shame. It kind of makes me wonder if, if a lot of those people had stayed with D&D Beyond what the character sheet might look like today, but oh well. Uh, but yeah, and the character sheet itself, I, I like the layout. I think it's easy. Uh, oh, you can collapse this too expand it so you can hide some of this stuff when it's when it's not being used yeah i i like it i like it a lot and this is early this is early access stuff so i think we're just gonna get better from here so i don't know what the window is on how long this is open but if you're interested in this you, you definitely want to jump on uh getting into this and playing it while you can i do know that you can go to daggerheart.com They've got where you can download the like the rule book. I've got it. I just haven't read through it yet. So daggerheart.com, you can do that. Uh, like Fishy mentioned a minute ago, Critical Role did do a stream last night, so that should be up on their YouTube channel pretty soon if you want to see it in action. And uh, but yeah, the best thing if you want to just kind of jump in and play, go to Demi Plane, uh, and then they've got a bunch of different nexuses, is what they call them. Just go to the Daggerheart ne Nexus, and yeah, it's free. You can sign up for free and go and, and make a character. So that's that's what I suggest. And then, you know, while this window's open, I think, uh, and I'm looking at you, Fishy, because you're one of my streamers, <laughs> but we're going to have to get, we're going to at least have to do a one shot to do some play testing on this. So I'll be making a post on that in the, in the Discord. So if you want to, if you're interested in that, if you're in my Discord, just keep an eye out for that. If not, you can get to the links on the Twitch or the YouTube description. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll put something together and we'll try to at least run run something in this just to see how it works. Because I, I think there's I think there's some interest in this, at least among the community I have in, in the Discord there. So, Well, with that, I think I'm running out of time for my lunch stream, so I'm going to probably have to get back to it. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, especially the Philly and Fishy Bugs. Thank you for uh, hanging out with me for the last 45 minutes or so and chatting with me here. Uh, yeah, if either of you are interested, let me know. We can we can play this sometime. I'd, I'd really like to try it out. Uh, and if you know if somebody else wanted to run it, I'd, I'd very much like to play in it instead. <laughs> so, with that though, I think I'm going to sign off. Have to get back to it. Uh, I will be back tonight at about ten. Be doing some magic arena. I'm going to try some more midweek magic. It is artisan brawl night. And then tomorrow night we have at 9.30 p.m. We've got our Dragon Bane campaign that just started. So that'll be episode two. So again, thank you guys for hanging out in the chat. Thank you for watching this. And we'll see you next time. And keep an eye peeled because we will definitely be playing some Daggerheart in the future. But until then, see you later.